All right, good afternoon and uh, welcome to another episode of the Jane Irrigation Training Series. I'm Richard Rastusha, Vice President of Water Management Solutions. And uh, today we're talking, I'm gonna talk about a subject that I think is uh, really fascinating. It's this whole concept of fertilizer injectors and more importantly, uh, why uh, we like the Dosatron fertilizer injector and how that can help you as a grower uh, be more successful. Um, and we're really fortunate to have somebody who I think is a real expert in this area leading us through our discussion today. And that's, uh, that's Frank Toves from uh, uh, IDC. So Frank, uh, I've known for quite a while now. And, uh, you know, Frank looks young, but I think he's been in this for <laughs> like 15 years now. And uh, when I think of somebody who's really... Um, uh, really welcome technology in agriculture and has really been a leader, you know, I, I think of uh, Frank. And when I think about somebody who's got hands-on practical knowledge in, in technology for uh, ag irrigation, especially in the Central Valley, again, Frank's, uh, Frank's name comes up first with a lot of people. So we're really fortunate to have Frank here. Uh, you know, Frank attended Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, uh, makes his home there in the Central Valley and has been uh, really active with the growers. And the uh, thing I really also appreciate about Frank is he cares about his customers. He wants to make them successful, and uh, and I know they really appreciate that. So, Frank, welcome, uh, welcome to the show today. How are you? Good, Richard. Thanks. Glad hey, to be so, here. Yeah. So I know it's been really uh, last couple of weeks. It got hot all of a sudden, right? We were having uh, reasonable normal temperatures, and now it's getting hot in the Central Valley. Uh, unusually hot. Uh, what's it been like out there? Yeah, I mean, it was ninety degrees in Salinas the other day, right? Which is uh, unheard of for us. So. We're, we're we're used to sunny in 65, um, but 90. I mean, some of the growers, uh, you know, we had a guy who had a repair the other day. It was you know, you got to get here now because my my lettuce is wilting, right? Uh, it's, yeah. So it's crazy. One day it's rainy, and the next it's 90. Um, right. And I can't imagine the Central Valley. I was in Sacramento yesterday, and it was pretty warm. So. Yeah, I know when we talked yesterday afternoon, late in the afternoon, I could hear it in your voice. We're like, man, <laughs> it's just busting out right now. So uh, anyway, well, I'm glad you're out there and helping. Uh, I, I know they uh, they need the help and they got the right person helping. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. So, well, let's talk uh, fertilizer injectors uh, for a second, Frank. And uh, I know you're involved with a lot of people who are uh, uh, growing indoors uh, as well as out. But um, uh, you know, uh, first question I want to ask is, you know, do I need a fertilizer injector if I'm a grower? What uh, what are the circumstances around that? Yeah, I mean, most growers for any crop are applying some type of fertilizer, right? Uh, and most of that is done through the irrigation water through fertigation. Um, we still have guys doing side dressing and stuff like that, but on the uh, on the bulk commercial farms, uh, a lot of it is done through the irrigation water. So a fertilizer injector is almost a necessity in almost all the branches that we deal with. Um, and you know, one of the most common ones being a manual Honda engine on a trailer, right? Uh, injecting either at the well site or at each valve, but definitely something that's required that most growers uh, are used to using. Yeah, so does every grower do their own or do they hire out to a third party sometime? How, how's that work? Yeah, I mean, you know, the commercial farms that we deal with here in Salinas Valley, Santa Maria Valley, they, there are both, you know, services that do fertilizer applications and then some guys that do it in-house. Uh, you know, we over the past few years, we've done more and more automation. So uh, trying to bring that stuff, you know, with the labor costs going up, trying to do that all locally, the grower controlling it themselves, right? So. Uh, but yeah, we do still see both, a lot of both. Yeah, and if uh, if I'm not using a fertilizer injector, what am I doing? Yeah, I mean, what are you doing, right? You're not applying fertilizer, probably. Def definitely not in your irrigation water, right? Yeah. Um, so if, if, if especially guys using drip, I mean, we almost always see a fertilizer injector of some type on drip systems. Yeah. Okay, well, that's great to hear, you know, and uh, especially because uh, drip's getting more and more popular uh, every year. Um, it, it's great to see these advancements, right? A lot, a lot of water savings there. So, what are, what are some of the uh, uh, what are some of the advantages of people using fertilizer injectors besides the uh, the ease? 
Well, just, you know, getting the, the fertilizer where it needs to be in the root zone, right? If you're using drip irrigation, uh, if you're in, using a fertilizer injector, a pump, uh, a dosatron that we're going to talk about today, um, you're getting a more precise application of that fertilizer to where it needs to be, where the crop needs it, right? Um, and then with the more and more regulations, you can control what you're actually putting out there, right? And record that and keep that data uh, for when someone asks for it. Yeah, so I was thinking about, you know, Eric Golson, uh, he did those uh, a few presentations on our three-part series on nitrogen for us. And when I think about nitrogen use efficiency being in the uh, in the 30s, right, maybe 35, 37%, I think, oh my gosh, we are wasting so much here. And uh, and uh, and what happens to all that nitrogen? So uh, that's uh, that's definitely a big advantage. So, uh, so thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so uh, there's many different fertilizer injectors out there, Frank. Yeah, everything from, like I mentioned, a, a basic gas powered, uh, you know, engine pump that you see on most farms to, to Maisie Venturi injection, which uh, are also uh, pretty common to, to dosatrons and all the way up to fully automated systems, right, with, with pumps and, uh, you know, high speed solenoids and Venturi combos. So we sell and deal with all aspects of it. It really depends on the application and the, the grower level, right, where they're at. So then for, um, for the dosatrons, which you, uh, you do a lot of work with and uh, installation with, um, you like those a lot, how come? Well, for one, they're easy. Uh, easy to, to use, easy to install. You don't need any electricity, um, you know, the serviceability of them, the the support I think uh, behind Dosatron themselves, the the local support they have here in California, in the states in general, um, that's one of the biggest factors that that we consider when we when we partner with the manufacturer, right? And uh, just the the ease of the grower transitioning from a very manual way to do fertigation to the next step, which we would consider a Dosatron, and 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 that ease of transition for the grower, right? So. To get to the next level, it's a good stepping stone. Yeah, so when I think of a fertilizer injector, I think of a pump, right? Somehow I've got to pump this uh, fertilizer, liquid fertilizer into my drip, but then you said there's no uh, no electricity. So how does this happen? Uh, you know, I have a few slides that'll go over it, but basically there's a hydraulic piston or a motor that the water flow and pressure will drive that piston uh, through the dosatron and causes suction, which will draw the nutrient or fertilizer up into the flow. Um, and that's how you get the injection. Yeah, so that's interesting, right? Because when I, when I think of pistons, right? I think of, uh, of course, my truck engine. And yeah. uh, I think about the lubrication of the oil there. Do we just, uh, does the water just lubricate the, this piston? And this is why? Yeah, they're, it's all water driven. Um, you know, the newer models are, are all uh, plastic. So high uh, reliability, uh, you know, the we service them every year to keep them going, but there's some units that have been out there for longer than I've even known about them, right? So yeah. definitely a reliable form of injection. Right. Well, listen, do you have some photos or something we can see uh, on your slides? Would, uh, yeah, would this be a good time to start sharing that? Let's get it up here. Can you see that? Yeah, it looks just great. Perfect. And I, while Frank's getting set up here, I just want to remind everybody that we have both the chat and the Q&A open. So if you've got uh, some questions you want to ask somebody who's uh, really experienced with these uh, products, uh, today's, uh, today's your chance to ask Frank. So. so the first slide, basically, you know, if you don't know what fertigation is, it's, uh, it's the most common form of chemigation. Um, and it's injecting fertilizer of any type directly into the irrigation water. And like I mentioned previously, we want to do that because that's the most efficient uh, way to do to apply the fertilizer directly to the where the plants need it. Right. And then, you know, here's the, the types that we talked about pumps being gas or electric, uh, venturis, automated dosing, which can involve pumps and venturis, and then hydraulic dosing with something like a dosatron. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah, it's interesting. You know, I think one of the questions we're getting now and one we always get is, um, look, I, I've got a fertilizer injector for my roses at, at, at my home. And um, uh, I would say that 
uh, how much fertilizer I put on them is, uh, is somewhat subjective, but it actually should be very objective, right? So yeah. how do we know how much fertilizer to put in these tanks that actually go, go to the plants? Yeah, you got to talk to your, your crop advisor, right? Um, uh, there's a lot of CCAs out there that can help make those determinations. Um, you know, we don't make those recommendations here at IDC, but we can help determine uh, the injection rates with their help, right? And determine the right equipment to use and, and, and how to apply that. But it, it's definitely a science of, of both irrigation and chemigation and fertigation, not, not an art, right? Right, so it's really, I mean, it's a calculation. Yeah, the plant needs what the plant needs. And, uh, um, you know, that, that, that is a, a hard fact to try to get across to some, some people, but to, it's definitely true. Right, so your, your crop advisor is going to help you figure out how much uh, nitrogen, for example, your plant needs. And then if you know uh, how much uh, water your drip system is putting out per plant, uh, uh, you should be able then, reading the label directions of the fertilizer, figure this out. Exactly. So with something like a, a dosatron, we can select the right equipment to, to make sure we meet those injection requirements. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, and I think, you know, I, I'm always, uh, I'm always in awe when I drive by these farms and I look and I see all the plants, the same size, <laughs> same uniformity. And I think, oh man, you know, someone's doing a really good job of getting everything uh, um, equal to, to all the plants. Exactly. So this next slide just sh uh, shows a little animation of how the water flows through the dosatron. So in this example, the, the units installed in line with the complete total water flow going through the unit. Um, as you can see on that number four there, the, the concentrates mix with the incoming water as that piston goes up and down. So, you know, a little thing, some things to consider when designing systems for this is there, there is a pressure loss across that dosatron, uh, depending on the size of the unit, uh, anywhere from a few PSI to, you know, five or six PSI. So, definitely consider that when designing these systems, but that, that's what's, what's needed to drive that, that mechanism. So does this go uh, upstream of the valves or downstream? You know, typically we install them uh, downstream of say an electric valve, um, if we're gonna automate something. Uh, and then we, we have valves on both sides if we're gonna do any kind of serviceability. So it really depends on the application, the branch, what, what you're doing where these are installed. We've, we've done them at the pumping station. We've done a lot of them out in the open field at the valve level. So there's a, a endless possibilities of where these can be installed and, and how can they, the, what they can be installed with. Yeah, I know you know what I'm thinking here, right? Do I need uh, one per valve or can I buy one and run it through multiple valves? So I guess what I heard was you could do one if you had a master valve to be safe, yeah. right? Because you wouldn't want this under pressure all the time. Yeah, I mean, these, they can operate upwards of 100 PSI, depending on the, the model that you choose, right? So, uh, and we do recommend that you install proper air vents. Uh, if you're in an indoor facility, we use surge arresters uh, to, to, you know, protect the equipment from water hammer uh, and, you know, sudden spikes in pressure. Uh, but there are a bunch of different models. So here on this slide, you'll see that we have, uh, you know, on the left, is a, a pretty common D14, which is a 14 GPM model. Uh, there's a D40 there, which is also pretty common on the indoor applications, all the way up to the one on the far right, which is 400 GPM. So uh, we've, we've installed these in, in parallel to, to achieve upwards of 1200 gallons a minute on open field applications for say uh, strawberries, for example. So there's a bunch of combinations here. Um, and you can install them, you know, at the main pump, at the valve, like you said, uh, it just really depends on the application. Yeah, so I'm looking at that one on the far right. Uh, it almost looks like a filter down below. Is that a filter? No, it's a, it's a dosatron's proprietary diverter technology. So it, it uses a smaller unit on top uh, to achieve a higher flow rate to the system. Whereas this, if you look at this, this one in the middle is a 100 GPM unit, that, that one still has the whole flow going through the actual system itself, where the two on the right are actually on, I would say a bypass to, to make it easy type system. If you were to open this up, you would see there's 
uh, only part of the flow, about 10% of the flow that goes through the actual dositron. Yeah, okay. And then uh, the ones on the left, right, the far left, yeah. um, how are those typically installed? Do you, uh, uh, do you clip them to the wall? What, what, what do you do? Yeah, we've done everything. You, they, they come with a little bracket that you can mount to say a Unistrut or directly to a backboard um, out in the field to a, a two by 12, right? So they're really easy to install. Uh, it's, this picture here has, you know, some common ap applications of how they're uh, manifolded together. So this here on the top with the blue units uh, is common on indoor or greenhouse growing where we have a lower flow rate that we can, all the water will go through the units. Um, we have a monitor kit, a couple of mixing chambers. Uh, and then this here on the right, far right, is a the surge arrestor that I mentioned to protect for pressure spikes. Yeah, so, uh, well, this is interesting, right? Because um, it, it doesn't look like, um, I'm, I mean, if you've done a few of these, this looks like a pretty simple installation. Uh, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't take too long, right? No, definitely. I mean, it's all NPT threads. Uh, we use a lot of unions, a lot of banjo fittings. So not something that's terribly difficult to install. Uh, we've helped growers install it themselves, right? Um, get them going on it. So, and the same goes with the service of it. It can be done by the grower. Uh, we can do it here in-house at our locations. Uh, not something that takes uh, very much learning to, to, to use and to operate and install. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. I hadn't thought about that, but uh, you're, you're, you're probably going to help me set it up maybe the first time, but uh, after that, am I going to be good to go or am I going to still have questions? Yeah. With j just about anything that we sell, right. It, there's always going to be that period of, uh, I don't know what this is or how it works. Right. Even though I went through the training, you show me how to do it. Uh, so yeah, I would say there's going to be a few phone calls, a few visits to, to dial in the injection rate, to, to understand some of the issues that you could come up with. But the more and more you use it, the easier it is, right? Um, a lot of people use Venturi's, for example, which are also great. And they, they're they so used to using them, right? That they're almost standard on a lot of systems. So it's one of those things that once you use it and learn it, uh, it becomes second nature. Yeah. So that's it. I, I love that. Um, and the, the other thing, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this too, and I, I want to give a plug to you. You guys are doing such a good job on your blog right now on the uh, IDC uh, website uh, that uh, a lot of what I need to remember, right? If I'm not doing it every day, I always have to remind myself, you know, a month or two later of how to do that. And some of the real hands-on um, subject material that you guys are producing on your blog right now is really great for that, right? So uh, uh, being able to review that uh, has certainly been helpful and, uh, and saved me a, a phone call from, from time to time. So uh, if you guys haven't taken a look at the blog on the IDC website, uh, Irrigation Design and Construction uh, or IDC Support Apply, uh, do it. Uh, the blog's just great. Uh, fascinating articles there that Frank and his team have put together. Yeah, and a lot of those blog articles come from uh, in-field, real-world experience, right? You know, uh, Jesse, one of our technic technicians, just did a blog on uh, electrical maintenance, right? So you'd be surprised on how many calls we get because of someone that didn't do the wiring correctly, right? Or they, they didn't maintain the system correctly. So easily avoidable problems can be done can be uh, you know solved by just preventative maintenance and that's why i think the blogs have been successful is because we're, we're the ones actually in the field the, the guys and the girls writing these uh, articles are the ones doing the work right yeah uh, and uh, we've seen yeah. the issues <laughs> so yeah. And totally, Frank, I read that article. I really did. And then I went and I checked all my electronics in, on my irrigation system because I started to think they're going to go bad as soon as it gets really hot. <laughs> and, yeah. and I yeah. need them, right? And I don't want to be repairing them. And I, I mean, you think about how easy it is and to spot the issues. That's, uh, you guys had some photos and you go, oh, yeah, these are obvious issues to spot that it may not be a problem today, but it's going to be a problem. And Murphy's Law says it's going to be. Uh, the Friday before a three-day weekend that I'm getting ready to go away. Yeah, I mean, the the calls that we get are Saturday and Sunday, right? And it, it never fails that you're, of course, that's the time you're doing something with your family. But 
these systems require uh, constant maintenance, right? The, the plants don't growing don't stop growing because it's a Sunday. Um, so right. if you can do that preventative maintenance, uh, definitely help reduce those calls on the weekends. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So then I also, one thing you didn't show yet, and I saw it on the website, uh, the Dosatron website was the, uh, the cart. Yeah, um, definitely. I don't have a photo of that in the slides, but that's something that's pretty popular with, uh, you know, say greenhouse growers, you can roll it to say a, a specific bench or a zone and plug it in with some quick disconnect fittings and maybe add a, a certain fertilizer treatment for just a single set, right? Um, a lot of nurseries use them. We see them on a lot of cannabis farms. Um, and it's, it's, you know, even on disinfection, we've seen people use it to apply, you know, hydrogen peroxide or, or some other thing for disinfection, right? So very mobile, uh, easy to use, um, easy way to apply a, an additional nutrient when needed. Right, and so, and then we just got a, got a question in again, right? Does it use power to work? And I think the point is, right, that it, it doesn't. It does not, yeah, they're hydraulically driven, so driven by the water. Um, you know, in this, this photo here, there is a power for this EC and pH monitor, uh, but the actual injection themselves are, are no electricity required. So farms are great, uh, you know, remote sites, we do a lot of these for that reason. Yeah, um, Frank, um, are there other things people inject besides fertilizer into their systems? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the, the applications for these dosatrons, you'll see them everywhere from uh, the, the medical industry, uh, very popular in car washes, believe it or not. Uh, if you go into a car wash room in, or just look up some pictures, you'll see a ton of dosatrons. Um, and then in the growing, people use them for you know pH, so acid. Um, you see a silica here being injected. So, uh, you know, a lot of different applications available for these, uh, with these dose drones. Huh, that's interesting. That uh, I think sometimes we're only limited by our imagination, what, what, what we can do here. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, like I, I mentioned, disinfection, right? When this pandemic started that, you know, they, they released some products that were geared directly towards that, which, which I think was you know, a pretty creative way to use something that already existed. Yeah, interesting. That's uh, that's great to know. So I'm wondering, right? These are um, pretty usable, easy to install. I can figure out how much uh, fertilizer to apply pretty simply. Um, I'm thinking they've got to be really expensive, right? But um, yeah. ballpark figures. How, how do they how do they rate? So some of the smaller units, the inline units, can be a few hundred dollars to say fifteen hundred dollars list price. Um, depending on the, the concentrations that you want to inject. Um, and then when you get to the bigger units, you know, these ones down here are, they could be in the thousands, right? So um, just depending on the application, they're very, very common on indoor grows uh, because of the, they're very cost effective, right? So accurate, reliable, simple, and uh, not expensive. So, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and you can find them everywhere, right? We carry them, they're in stock in our locations. A lot of hydro stores have them uh, and, you know, they're not, not, not expensive, right? Right, because I'm thinking also, it's not something I buy for one season and I have to get a new one next year, right? I'm gonna get how many seasons out of these? Yeah, in, like I mentioned, we, there's some that have been around for 15, 20 years you know, longer than I even knew how to use them. So um, we've come across some in some old greenhouse facilities here in Monterey County that, that have been working for since the seventies, right? Um, so um, with some seal kits and some replacement kits, we get them back and up and going and uh, they seem to last for a really long time uh, if you keep that maintenance up on them, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, when I think about what I'm investing into my uh, my fields, this is uh, one of the uh, smaller investments that actually gets me a lot more value uh, in, in the long run, right? Yeah, definitely, especially when you're talking about uh, the nutrients that that the plants require, right? Uh, putting the investment in in things like irrigation and fertigation would be on the top of my list if if I were a grower because that, that's where all the water goes. Right, so um, yeah, so what are we looking at here? This is a lot of numbers for me. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty daunting, but 
it, it basically is telling you the the percentage or the ratio of injection for the unit. Say on a on a, a 40 GPM, a D40 or D8 dosatron, you can have a 0.2 to 2% injection ratio. So you turn the dial on the, do, the dosatron itself to set that injection rate. Um, and the, here's our, these are some quick charts to, to kind of help you determine where to, to put those set points, right? Um, so if you want to do uh, one mil per gallon, uh, it's, you know, 0.026% on the dosatron. Uh -huh. so, and and on Dosatron's website, uh, both Dosatron USA and DilutionSolutions.com, you can find calculators that are very helpful. Um, so you can take a, say if you're in, using a bottled fertilizer of some type, you can take those uh, recommended injection rates off the bottle and convert it to the, the Dosatron percent injection or ratio. Very nice. And so somebody is asking too, uh, um, is there a uh, maximum amount per hour and a minimum amount per hour that you can inject? Yeah, it really comes down to the unit that you're choosing. So if you're using a, a 40 GPM uh, model, let's say, and you choose a, that can do 5%, you, you can inject two gallons a minute, right, basically. So uh, yeah, based on the, the model that you choose, the injection rate offered on that specific unit, you can do the map and determine what that, that low and high range of injection would be compared to the flow. Yeah, and a few people are commenting right now that uh, their experience with the dosatrons have been really positive, uh, that uh, a, lot of, a lot of positive uh, uh, comments coming in on that. So Frank, if, uh, if somebody's not using a fertilizer injector or a dosatron right now, what, uh, what advice do you have for them? Well, first of all, I would say uh, talk to us so we can help you out. But uh, it's really an easy transition, right? From say hand mixing fertilizers or using a, a gas powered pump. Um, it's something that that's not gonna be too daunting for your field crew, your irrigator to manage and learn how to use, right? If they're, if they're already used to say hand mixing certain uh, volumes of different fertilizers into a tank, uh, this is gonna easily replace that with very, very little uh, learning needed to do that. Um, so just, just consider the labor savings, the time savings uh, and the, the return on investment on something like this is pretty quick. Yeah, so Frank, these are great photos. These are real installations that you've been involved in, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so can you take us through them, you know, starting with the one on the top left uh, on, it looks like an indoor uh, installation? Yeah, the top left is a, an indoor cannabis facility that um, is a pretty common, they call it the nutrient delivery system, which has, you know, a inlet filter. The inlets on this picture is on the right. Uh, we have a small electric doser for a very finite uh, dosing of a pH control, so an acid. We have a, a mixing chamber and then we have several dosatrons in line that all the water goes through these system, these dosatrons um, and is sent out to the broom. So in this case, we have two zones, so they have two manifolds. So we've got uh, on the bottom uh, eight uh, dosatrons. Yep. Is that because they're, they're dosing with eight different nutrients? Different. Yeah, exactly. So they have, um, you know, maybe a silica, a bunch of different uh, nutrients, a micro maybe, and then a pH control or a buffer of some type. So pretty common on the indoor applications. Um, the, the one on the, the center here is becoming more and more popular to have maybe just an AB with an acid injection. Uh -huh. So uh, it really depends on the growing style and the grower themselves, but uh, we're seeing more and more growers go to, to, to less of the eight or 10 injections, more of the, the AB micros maybe. And those look like they have some electronic keypads on them. What, what, what's happening there? So those there are the ECPH monitor. So we have an inline EC sensor and a pH sensor that will show the, the grower what that, what that water that's flowing past those sensors is reading. Um, you know, these are manual injection uh, or manual set points. So there's no uh, automatic adjustment of those EC and pH sets, uh, settings, uh, but you can do that while, while viewing that EC and pH, make those adjustments to get the targets that you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of growers that, that use them in that way where they want a, a 
EC of two and a pH of 6.5, say, um, and they really disregard the, the, the injection percentage, right, recommendations, and they just set those fertilizers to inject to a certain rate to meet targets, huh. which is which leads to the next goal of uh, then automating, right? Um, once, once you learn how to do this manual type injection with the help of something simple like a dosatron, you can then step into the next world of fully automated systems. Um, and that's, that's what we see a lot of as well. Yeah, I'm thinking about uh, the blueberries we were talking about earlier, right? Exactly. Would, yeah, it'd be a great setup for them. Yep. And that's what we have there on the, on the right is actually on a, a strawberry ranch. And uh, the system flow rate is about 1100 GPM there. So we have these three dosatrons uh, plumbed in series or in parallel um, where all the system flow rate goes through the three of them. And then we, we tie those dosatrons into a single tank where we inject the, a single uh, blend of fertilizer. Yeah, boy, what a, talk about a clean installation too. That looks beautiful. Yeah, definitely uh, something we take pride in is our installation crews do a good job of making sure everything not only looks looks clean but operates correctly no leaks yeah so frank if i want your help getting started uh, how do i get a hold of you uh, i would say you could find me on instagram that's a, that's a good start um, from there i you know reach out through a direct message or a dm and uh, i can get you my email contact or my phone number that's probably the easiest way and then we have a team, you know, all on the coast, uh, Southern California, all the way up to the Oregon border. So we, you know, wherever you're at, especially in California, we, we have you covered. Yeah, that's for sure. You guys, uh, and, and really you just had some new growth into uh, kind of the LA County area. Is that right? Yeah, we just hired a new uh, outside salesperson that's specifically covering that area. Um, you know, LA, Riverside, uh, you know, Adelanto, Desert Hot Springs, all that area. Um, and this is one of the product lines that's uh, successful down there, so. And that's uh, mostly the indoor growers. Indoor greenhouse, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's fantastic, Frank. Well, listen, uh, thank you so much for joining us on a uh, very busy week and a very busy Friday for you. Uh, appreciate uh, your time and effort. And for those of you who've tuned in today, uh, thank you. We really appreciate it. You know, if we uh, if we didn't have you, uh, we wouldn't be here doing this. And uh, we like doing this. We like irrigation. We love water management. And uh, this is what gets us excited and going every day. So um, if you haven't seen all the trainings, you know, we've got about 100 now at the uh, jamesusa.com uh, forward slash trainings. Uh, you can see all the videos there. We also are on Spotify, Google, and uh, Apple Podcasts. So if you want to listen as you're going from uh, uh, job to job, uh, you can uh, listen to our podcast as well. So again, Frank, thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope everybody has a, uh, a great weekend and a, a really successful season this year. So thanks thank again, you. Frank. Thank you.